James Laurinaitis, new linebackers coach for Ohio State. News just broke. Letterman Row has the full story on lettermanrow.com. In the meantime, we're going to talk about it. Andy Backstrom in the middle of your screen. Tim May on the other side of that screen with his nice fancy Tim May hat. And it's me, Spencer Holbrook. Let's talk about it. James Laurinaitis, Andy, uh, decorated linebacker, um, storied career in the NFL, now going to be the linebackers coach for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The, the staff is finished, 10 uh, assistants, and Ryan Day is the head coach. Uh, first thoughts? Yeah, I feel like we, we felt like this was trending in this direction. Now it's official. The staff is final. James Laurinaitis is part of this as a linebackers coach, which means that Jim Knowles will just be the defensive coordinator, which takes him off of his plate, allows James Laurinaitis to work with the linebackers, which he already did last year in an assistant linebacker role as a graduate assistant. Now he's full-time, which helps for the recruiting side of things. James Laurinaitis clearly has an accomplished history at the college level, also played in the NFL, was a standout there largely for the St. Louis Rams at the time. And there is a lot that comes with that credibility, uh, ability to show what you can translate to the NFL from Ohio state. It seems like kids really take him seriously. Uh, it's someone that they can look up to and try to mold their careers around. So I think this is a huge win for Ohio state in a lot of ways, but especially on the recruiting trail for the Buckeyes. And then for Jim Knowles, it just makes his job a little bit more concentrated on just coordinating the D which I think is a good thing for the Buckeyes as well. Yeah, uh, I've known James Laurinaitis since, what, he was 17 years old and when Ohio State first recruited him and uh, just watched him grow up, show up basically as an unheralded to a certain extent linebacker, which is crazy to think about now, and uh, work his way right up into the starting lineup and then right into All-American status a couple of years running and uh, play in the NFL for an extended career and – the thing I'm, I get point I'm getting to, I guess, is that, you know, he can show you how to do it. <laughs> he can also put on the video of him doing it and showing you how to do it uh, from a coaching standpoint. He understands the game. He's been in the NFL. He understands the modern game, how you can uh, how to meld a run game uh, support and pass game coverage uh, like no other uh, and. He just he has all he had all the tools it took to be a big time uh, three down linebacker, and uh, now he's uh, parlaying that into a coaching job. I, I just keep remembering him on those morning shows uh, with Bo Bishop back when he when uh, James was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with that next step in his life, and decided pretty much talk radio wasn't it finally. But uh, you know he went to Notre Dame for a year. He was at Ohio State last year. You know really the conundrum. And you heard me ask uh, Ryan Day about it at the press conference a week or so ago. The conundrum for Ryan Day was, you know, there's a big step for any young former player who's uh, living a little bit on his own reputation. But that's not James. I mean, James works his butt off every day. But there's that big step from being almost a celebrity uh, student assistant coach to a full-time uh, one of the number, one of the ten in the in the uh, corral coaches, where you recruiting is as is as vital, if not more vital, than uh, than coaching on the field and coaching in the classroom. And uh, Ryan Day wanted to see proof, and I think he has seen proof that uh, James Laurinaitis can be quite the effective recruiter. Isn't that right, Spence? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There are a lot of reasons to like this move for Ohio State. Recruiting is near the top of the list, if not at the top of the list. Um, recruits, according to Matt Parker, lettermanrow.com, we'll get that coverage for $1 right now. Uh, recruits have talked about James Laurinaitis as uh, being with the reason that they're considering Ohio State, the reason that they want to they go to Ohio State. He has a great relationship with multiple uh, top-tier recruits. And you see that play out on the recruiting trail. James was allowed on the recruiting trail this past winter. Uh, now it's, we're in a dead period, but he was allowed out there and recruits really took a liking to him. And I think this is a, a very good thing for the uh, future of the talent at Ohio State. Now he has to, to show that he can coach because I don't think there was any question of whether he could recruit him. There, there, it was he's so personable. He, you know, he takes the time, he he's genuine in his conversations. You know that that's gonna connect well sitting in living rooms. Yeah, Just well, let me that, check real quick. But there's there's a big difference between being, you know, sort of thrown out there. Uh, to replace somebody else on the staff who's who's gone, or it would, and wanting to do that every day of the rest of your life, you know, I mean, that's yeah. that what you have to gauge. Uh, that zeal, uh, 
Uh, and that's what that's what I'm referring to recruiting. We all know James can talk his way into anything because he's that engaging a young man. Go ahead now. But what's more important than even recruiting is on-field coaching. And I I personally believe that the reason this took so long or the reason that this was so vetted out is because you have to make sure that this guy can coach football. And, like, you know, he played the position at a very, very high level. He did everything you you want a former player who's going to end up being a coach. You the, He did everything that you would want him to do. But coaching it is a completely different thing. He had one year at Notre Dame as a graduate assistant after after doing – a really good job on 97 won the fan here in Columbus with Bo, like you said, had one year at Notre Dame and then has one year at Ohio State. And now he's getting the keys to a position group as a full-time coach. That shows that everyone he's worked with, Marcus Freeman and uh, the coaches, uh, I believe Al, Al Golden maybe at Notre Dame, and then Jim Knowles and Ryan Day have saw things in him that make would make him a good coach. But I still think – and, and, you know, I don't think James would, would uh, be angry if we said this. I still think this is a little bit of a risk in promoting him because he's only got a limited experience in a meeting room, teaching the position as a full-time coach, Andy. Like there, there are, this is a, I think this is a, this is a great move for Ohio State to finish out the staff. Another former player, you know, on the defensive side of the ball with Tim Walton, uh, with, with Brian Hartline, with CJ Barnett in the building. Like there's so many former players who are getting involved, Andy. But I also think that this is a job. This is a, a a promotion that doesn't come without a little bit of risk. No. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned the one of the names, Brian Hartline. Like, there's always going to be a risk when you take a mm-hmm. former player yeah. and then you eventually have them on staff. And Brian Hartline is one of the key pieces of this staff, not only recruiting wise but development wise. That's why there's so many Ohio State wide receivers going in the first round of the NFL draft now. So you're always going to be taking a risk, especially when it's a player to coach uh, conversion there. That that's so I guess recent, relatively. But, you know, that's part of it, and that's part of the deal. Sometimes you get the best guys who are still young into it before any other program can get their hands on them. And that's the benefit Ohio State has, given that these guys are alums. And so you have to hope, if you're an Ohio State fan, that James Laurinaitis can follow at least somewhat of a similar path as Brian Hartline. But, I mean, that's a tall standard to reach in terms of the recruiting prowess and everything. But the other takeaway I have from this, too, is that, okay, this means that they're investing more on the defensive side of the ball an assistant position dedicated solely to linebackers. Jim Knowles is now just a defense coordinator, which means that there won't be a full-time special teams coordinator. That is a change. We, we were expecting that to be the change, but now it's official. And so now special teams will be spread among, assuming a few assistants, maybe just one assistant. And Ryan Day seemed to say that he was going to take a big role with special teams the last time we talked to him in the press conference a couple of weeks ago. So it's clear that there's going to be a difference in special teams now. That's official, and that's another takeaway I have from this that we can kind of talk about as with the staff is now finalized for 2024. Yeah, I mean that was what that was what Ryan Day was pondering almost everything you just said there. I mean, do I need a full time special teams assistant? That didn't really work out the way they wanted it to the last couple of years. And then on top of that, you have to ponder like you just said. You know, in uh, 2018, Brian Hartline was elevated and almost in an emergency status. In, the, in preseason uh, to take the place of Zach Smith, who had been fired. And, and Zach Smith, you know, people say what they want to about him one way or the other. I thought he was, I thought he was a, I thought he was a damn good coach and he recruited pretty well. He kind of got, he did get the, uh, the uh, zone six thing going and it's just picking up uh, snow as it rolls down the hill now. But, uh, but the bottom line is you had to see what Brian Hartline could do and he got, got the job done, but he also elevated Ryan Day, uh, what last year elevated Keenan Bailey from a long time, basically graduate student assistant who had uh, uh, at several in several areas, named him to that staff. And now you name a guy who, like you said, has only been, quote, coaching. Wait, I got to get that centered. I always forget where the camera is here. Uh, coaching for two years. It's a little bit of a, like you said, a risk, but I tell you, as much of a risk is going out and hiring a veteran guy who's bounced around a bunch of places too. You know, I mean, uh, you know, it's sometimes if you really get to know a guy, and he had a chance to get to know James Laurinaitis for a while. I think, I think this is a calculated, damn good uh, risk he's taken with James Laurinaitis because you've been around James, y'all have. Uh, he's passionate about football, man, and like you just said, uh, Spence, 
uh, there's one thing from playing it and having others coach you to play it, but then turn around and teaching it. That is the key. But I will go back, harken back to this. When uh, Ryan Day was asked, number one, what is his, what does he look for an assist in an assistant coach, a full-time assistant coach? The first thing he named in December was recruit. Can he recruit? And uh, I think James has proven some things to him over the last couple of months. Yeah, and I I think that we should think back to when James was introduced just as a, a grad assistant and, and Ohio State was was kind enough to let us talk to him. We don't get to talk to the grad assistants, but it's definitely a thing. <laughs> With James, it was a little different because he's such a, a presence and a name. And he gave a quote, and I, you know, whether I read the whole thing or not. He was talking about how the job is to win games, and then he says this. But at the end of the day, it's also about – some of these young linebackers or even the older guys, will they leave here with something in their life where they could say, you know what, not only did Coach Laurinaitis teach me ball, but he taught me what it's like to be a good father and a good husband and help them realize the power of Ohio State. You can yeah. set yourself up for the next 40 years after ball. Hopefully every guy that comes through plays for 10 years in the league, but I can share with them that I played for eight in the league. I retired at 30 with a lot of life left. That experience is something you can't teach. And when you mix the, like you said, Tim, the passion for coaching – in, a, in an era right now where so many coaches are getting to the NFL to coach, and he could have probably done that if he really wanted to and, and went and started being a, a video coordinator or something for the NFL and worked his way up that ladder and not had to recruit a day in his life. You know, he could have stayed on the radio and collected that NFL pension and just and been really had a really great life. But the passion for coaching is there, and coaching younger players, the college level is obviously there. The passion for Ohio State is there. And the yeah. passion for developing these guys, again, like he says, as football players, and then he says as husbands and fathers, like that's a guy that you want in your corner. And if Ohio State didn't promote him, someone else was going to. And so I agree, Tim. I agree, Andy. Like the risk is is almost worth the reward by default because you have him and someone else doesn't. And you've got him for two years now. It's a two-year contract. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. James Leonidas is still going to love Ohio State, and Ohio State's still going to love James Leonidas. But, you know, this is a two-year prove-it kind of situation and i think that james ornitis is going to do a pretty good job of proving that he belongs uh you know as one of the 10 assistants uh on this coaching staff andy yeah yeah go ahead andy i'm sorry sorry yeah, Tim, well, I said, I oh, yeah. well three three former now you got three former players who who played with great repute uh, obviously james Laurinaitis, you'd stack them above that but tim walton was a hell of a solid player his entire time at ohio state and of course we know about brian hardline and uh and how he came on and then went to the NFL for that long career for stuff. You know, that that just shows another thing, too. Ryan Ryan Day gets it. He understands. I mean, he hears people, you know, saying diff, these things and that about it coming off three straight losses to Michigan and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure how important it is to have played football at Ohio State because, as I point out, Woody Hayes never did, you know, <laughs> but he was pretty good. Uh, Urban Meyer never did, but he was pretty good right on down the line. But uh, I think just the more you can add to that part of the foundation, the better you are as a coaching staff also. Andy? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, with this deal, like you have, as Spencer said, it's a prove-it opportunity. And the first thing that Ryan Day does in evaluating assistance is looking at recruiting. And that's the reason why some of the staff changes were made this offseason. And, and it's a reason why I think James Laurinaitis can excel in this role. I mean, at Ohio State, the standard is to have the best position group at every position. They want to be wide receiver you. They want to have the best quarterbacks. It's going to be the same thing for linebackers. They want to have the best linebackers at Ohio State. And I know even in Jim Knowles' system, which is a 4-2-5, you only got two out there at one time. But they've stocked up linebackers right now. There's a couple more they're going to be factoring in this year. And, and I think that having that pipeline is still going to be really important because it's one of those positions that just like running back injuries are almost a given. You're going to have guys go down at pretty much every season and you're going to need others to step up. And I think that's why recruiting at that position is of utmost, And that's where I think he can excel. Uh, I guess we can get into a little bit more of the details we were shared with about the extensions also mm -hmm. that were released today. And uh, Tim Walton was given a two-year extension. He's also promoted to assistant head coach in addition to his roles as cornerbacks coach and secondary coach. Uh, defensive coordinator Jim Knowles also got a two-year extension. And then uh, Larry Johnson got a new two-year contract. And then Keenan Bailey got a one-year extension. So a lot of other details released with the James Laurinaitis promotion and some good things, especially on the defensive side of the ball for Ohio State. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean Larry Johnson's going to be another two years? Wow. 
<laughs> you know where I'm going with that. Yeah. Yeah, plenty of uh, recruiting ammo against uh, against Larry Johnson, especially at Alabama, where you know Edric Houston was told Larry Johnson was going to retire, and then somebody else retired. It's pretty a crazy. People, a, lot, a lot of people spread. I mean, it's just amazing to me in this world now, and uh, I don't even understand the ulterior motives involved with some people, you know, questioning Larry Johnson and then say, you know, I mean, it it's 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 pretty hilarious now when you when you look at what what gets put out there anymore and what's fact. And uh, anyway, it is what it is. I'm not going to go off on that. I'm sorry. Larry Johnson's not going to coach forever, but new two year no, contract, not. But, but a new two year contract should give a little bit of assurances to a lot of folks, including recruits, including future prospects that could consider Ohio state. We can't go any further without addressing this. Yes. Yes. Andy has a Michigan helmet up there. Call it a Delaware helmet. If it makes you feel better. Andy collects many helmets. It's one of his very, uh, many passions that we love about him here at Letterman Row. Uh, it's it's he, not the collecting; it's how you display, uh, Andy. It's, uh, the it's, display. Uh, right you got know who you're the, displaying too. Go ahead now. It's right up there with Washington national title game. But yeah, the Ohio State helmet's right there. He's going to make sure to remind everybody that Michigan played Reminds in the national big head. He's going to make a lot of friends by reminding everyone Michigan played in the title game too. No, uh, it's a collection. <laughs> He, uh, he embraces the rivalry. He has great, tremendous respect for the rivalry. You you embrace the rivalry by respecting it, and Andy respects it enough to put the helmet up there. But back to the main point that we're doing here. I had to address that. It was in the comments, just ha- low-hanging fruit. We had to get that out of the way. Uh, we're not firing Andy Matthew Miller. That's not going to happen, uh, but I will put it on the screen because it's funny. Uh, we like to have fun with the fans. Fire. Uh, but, okay, let's get, let's get back to business. So all of these contracts, I don't think they really mean anything. Obviously, Keenan Bailey gets an extension. Good good for Keenan Bailey. But, like, in the grand scheme of things, that doesn't matter. Uh, Larry Johnson, new two-year contract. We knew he was back coming back this year. So, you know, he could still retire after the end of next year and just leave one year of fruit on the vine. So, like, th- those don't really matter. Tim Walton being promoted to assistant head coach. I love college football titles. They're the greatest thing ever, coaching titles. Um, but Tim Walton, that probably comes with a, with a raise if I had to guess. And, uh, I think that's much deserved. Tim Walton has proven himself like a lot, like a lot. So, a lot. yeah. Uh, so, you know, th- just some notes, Andy, is there anything that sticks out to you from those contracts, Andy? And then I'll throw it over to Tim. Yeah. I mean, I think that Jim Knowles to your extension says a lot, given that this defense was when he took it over. It was a test. Can he do this? Can he translate the success he had at Duke and Oklahoma State? Can he rebuild the Ohio State defense? He has. He has done that. And I know that the final drive against Michigan, you don't get the stop as soon as you want it. But ultimately, they did enough defensively to win that game. And I think that they did enough all season defensively. Defense traveled. It was one of the best defenses in the country. The only thing you could say is maybe they should have forced a few more turnovers here and there. But besides that, I thought it was an outstanding performance by Jim Knowles last year. And that's a validation of that performance and the commitment Ryan Day has to Jim Knowles. And I think that says a lot uh, because defensive coordinators like he he was up for a job. He could have taken the Duke head coaching job. I mean, I don't know if he was offered it, but he was a candidate for that position. And the fact that he's staying around at Ohio State says a lot, says a lot about his commitment to Ohio State in the program. And this extension says a lot about their faith in him continuing on to further build this defense. Yeah, through 2026. I mean, uh, uh, but like you said, I mean, you want to see the, you don't want to see some of the language in these contracts anymore if they're going to start holding assistant coaches to the length of their contracts, which I doubt is going to ever happen, you yeah. know, because when the opportunity comes, you have to be able to answer it. But uh, yeah, I, y'all weren't at a press conference one time where I think it was Urban Meyer I asked. I said, now you got an assistant head coach, you've got an associate head coach, you know. Who's in charge uh, if you can't go? You know, kind of like vice president, speaker of the house, whatever. And he just, you know, hemmed and hawed about it. But uh, it was interesting that uh, Larry Johnson, I keep crediting him with that one win at Michigan State during the COVID year when he coached and uh, when when uh, Ryan Day had to stay home. But, you know, boy, he's one of those bedrock college football dudes. That's Larry Johnson. And it's just encouraging to see him with that. But the Jim Knowles, Jim Knowles, you get the idea, is very happy here i don't y'all get that impression he even seems to like us you know the media so uh uh so i think those are all big time the fact that jim Knowles is in essence under contract longer really than than james laurinaitis right jim, james laurinaitis is a two-year deal and uh Knowles is through 2026 so interesting uh uh 
during the off season, uh, how things go with these assistant coaches. Cause they used to way back when I first started covering Ohio state football, they, they worked on one year agreements and now you're so paranoid about recruiting, about showing people there's going to be, there are legs and longevity uh, with the current, not just the current head coach, but with the current staff. It's just interesting how they, how they've made that happen. I think Ohio State's made it pretty clear that if Jim Knowles is a defensive coordinator in college football, it's going to be in Columbus. Um, the Buckeyes have made some some big commitments to Jim Knowles. Jim Knowles oh, yeah. has made commitments to Ohio State, and it's worked out for two years. Uh, you it'll know, be interesting. It'll be interesting to see the money involved, including with Chip Kelly, uh, when they finally get that all straightened out. Go ahead. I it one of the things that I think is interesting is like Ryan Day had Jeff Halfley in year one. And then for two years had some futility on the defensive side of the ball. Kerry Combs was the defensive coordinator for 2020. It didn't work out, but they still went to the championship game. You can't fire a guy after the championship game. Uh, well, I guess you could have, but, you know. Uh, and then uh, it didn't work out for the first two weeks of 2021. So he he demotes him, and Matt Barnes takes over as a defensive coordinator. And now the last two years, the defense slowly but surely uh, in 2022 um, to an extent – and then 2023, it was outstanding uh, for the entire year. Yeah. Uh, it got so straightened out that now Ryan Day and Jim Knowles are almost like a little bit of a pairing, right? It's almost like yeah. uh, not the longevity of like Dabo Sweeney and, and Brent Venables, but like if Brent Venables was going to be a defensive coordinator in college football, it wasn't going to be anywhere but Clemson. Yeah. And like I'm starting to get that sense with Jim Knowles where like Ryan Day has found a guy that he really likes working with and he he has grown with as a head coach. And now that's his defensive coordinator. It's the Ryan Day offense, which obviously the Chip Kelly offense this year, but it's still the Ryan Day offense, and it's the Jim Knowles defense. And uh, I, I think that is something that's worth saying. But also, uh, I found it hilarious that the words assistant head coach were tied to Tim Walton's name now. And in the same release, it said associate head coach Larry Johnson. So like right. you said, Tim, who's running the show here? Because uh, are they all three not allowed on the plane? Is this like a like yeah, a thing where – I they think it'd be interesting. In the same it'd, it'd be interesting to see if they sit in certain rows on the plane based on their titles. You know, yeah. we all know the titles. We know what the titles are. I mean, you know, we talked about it before is that the titles are there also to justify more money, <laughs> you know, and to make a guy look good. But uh, you know, Tim Walton is Tim Walton did a hell of a job last year. I don't know if y'all agree or not. Uh, I, in my opinion, of the, the past two seasons, especially. The secondary definitely got straightened out, and uh, I, I definitely worth the reward. Andy? Yeah, well, I mean, this takes me back to what Caleb Downs said when he got here and was talking to the media. He said, you know, when they were recruiting me at Ohio State the first time, there was a lot of good things said about the defense, what it might look like, but then actually seeing it come to fruition, right? it was easier to commit. You, you knew what it was going to be, and Ohio State lived up to the billing last year and, and really delivered defensively, which – made it easier for him to commit. And that just makes you optimistic about what's going to happen going forward. If they can keep repeating that kind of success on the defensive side of the ball, of how they can recruit. I mean, it's already showed up in this class. I mean, just talked about Tim Walton. He's got already three more top 100 corners committed for the 2025 class. I mean, just incredible recruiting streak he is on right now. And I think the more that you show it on the field, the easier it is on the trail and, that's going to make things easier for Tim Walton, now James Laurinaitis, all of them on this staff. And it's really starting to, you know, come to be Jim Knowles' staff. I mean, think about adding Matt Guerrero, too. That's something that, you know, maybe we don't talk enough about this offseason. That, that's his guy. I mean, that's someone that was a senior advisor and analyst for this program in 2022, Jim Knowles' first year, a little bit of comfort there. Now he's back in a full-time assistant role as well with that safeties group. And, you know, I know Tim Walton spearheaded the Caleb Downs commitment and the recruitment there, but you have to imagine good things are coming for that safety group as well in the recruiting world. Yeah, that's that's quite a bit of shakeup when you think about it all, all for a team that went 11 and two, <laughs> you know, that's quite a, quite a, quite a shakeup on the staff and just, you know, just having James Lornice ha having a much bigger voice now than, they, you know, than, than last season, uh, I think will pay dividends for them because he's been there, done that, et cetera. Now the big question is, and we're not going to know this till late November. Can they get off the field in the fourth quarter against Michigan? You know, I mean, there's always as good as things are, things can always be better. Well, until November, Andy's going to have that helmet up there uh, above his head. And uh, we're going to keep covering the Buckeyes here at LettermanRow.com. Uh, James Laurinaitis is the new linebackers coach, fellas. Uh, 
they have a new special teams coordinator. Don't really know exactly what that is. Uh, they've got a new safeties coach. They've got a new quarterbacks coach and offense coordinator. You might know him as Chip Kelly. That's a pretty big name. And now James Laurinaitis, another pretty big name, is on the coaching staff. So Ohio State has its 10. Ohio State has its head coach, and Ohio State has its new athletic director, the new president. It has been a bananas offseason for Ohio State and for LettermanRoad.com. And we're going to keep covering it like we do 365 days a year at LettermanRoad.com. Andy Backstrom in the middle of that screen, Tim May on the other side of that screen with the TM hat. I think it's tailor-made, but we're going to go ahead and make everybody it believe. Well, it's a double make- entendre. It's a double entendre hat. It, it's a tailor-made hat. We're going to let everybody. It's a mulligan know. hat, you know, it, the mulligan. If you can't, don't hit it right the first time, hit it again. Hey, by we're the way, gonna, like you said, Ryan Day and his new cabinet. That's what you were trying to get to there. Well, we're going to let everybody believe that that hat just says Tim May. And I think we should keep it at that. Andy Backstrom, Tim May, Spencer Holbrook, the Letterman Row crew. You know us. You might love us. You might hate us. I don't know. Whether you do or not, you're here watching. So thank you for watching. Hit like underneath. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and come be a member of LettermanRow.com. $1 for your first month. That's right. $1 for your first month. Tim, it's cheaper than Peacock. It is way cheaper than Peacock, man. And uh, it doesn't start, stop like Peacock, you know, especially in the in the fourth quarter when you really want to watch it, watch the game. But uh, I'm not knocking Peacock. It's better than watching a blank screen. Uh, that's debatable. But until then, Tim May, Andy Baxter, Spencer Holbrook. We'll see you guys over at LettermanRow.com. $1 for your first month. We'll see you guys there.